Welcome, welcome! It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And today I thought we would go a little more into depth on the RSI Galaxy, especially with the Q&A that has come out. Uh, apologize, I haven't had many videos out here in the last week or so. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a little under the weather. I'm trying to bounce back from uh, what I assume is the flu. Uh, hasn't been fun, I can tell you that. Some sleepless nights. Uh, <clears throat> lots of chills and fevers and everything else. So, let's talk about this ship. This ship, to me, is one of the cooler ships that they've brought out in recent memory. I, I like the shape of it. Um, you know, I like the fact that it's modular. Though, it, to me, it wouldn't have mattered if it was modular. Uh, you know, it just depends on what it was made for. Uh, I would honestly prefer to have three of these, so I don't have to switch the modules out. But who wants to buy three of these when you don't really have to? So, which module will I use? Cargo, med bay, or refinery? Or something else? I don't know. <clears throat> it all depends on the mission that's ahead. Uh, you know, it'll be nice being able to go to the refinery and help my guys out in, you know, an asteroid belt while they're mining. Maybe nice to bring this thing along to keep in orbit as a medical ship, you know, a hospital, and, you know, that in case uh, somebody on an op needs quick medical attention. Or it may be nice to just use it as a little cargo runner, uh, you know, in between smaller stops. We'll have to wait and see, you know, as each mission comes along. <clears throat> you do have the tractor cranes that are included with the cargo module, it has hangar access. It can hold 512 SCU, which is very close to what the C2 can hold. So it will hold a massive amount of cargo for you. Uh, and then it also has a cargo lift to pull that cargo in. <clears throat> now, if you do the med bay, you can have tier three med beds, tier two med beds, or even a tier one med bed in this sh ship. So it's gonna have all three sizes for you and again it'll have hangar access so when you bring your C8R Pisces uh, you know search and rescue ship in uh, you can bring them straight into the med bay from there uh, it does have a life lift that it can bring up people from the ground as well so the med bay is going to be extremely useful especially on smaller ops uh, I mean even larger ops this thing could be pretty useful uh, as far as supporting your team as a med bay as a refinery, <clears throat> it'll have that command console, hangar access again, uh, two different processors, and, mineral, and a mineral extractor. Uh, it should be able to store, well, actually we'll get into that because some people ask that question as well. Um, as you can see, there's some pictures here of different parts of the ship. The ship is 110 meters long, it's going to be 60 meters wide, 22 meters tall, and it has a crew of six. It will have three remote dual size five turrets, two racks of four size two missiles, and the hangar in the back that can fit extra, extra small ships, and then one shield that's a size three. We'll talk about price and then we'll go into the Q&A. If you want to get the regular Warbon freighter version, it's 415. The hospital version is 430 and the refinery is 425 if you want the complete pack which gives you all the modules it's going to be 530 as warbond uh, you also get the paint job as well in that one if you are a concierge uh, the war you could go with credits and get the complete pack for 570 you could get a standalone ship at 350 or 380 <coughs> The paint job is $13, or you could buy the modules separately at $70, $90, or $80, respectively. Uh, you could also upgrade into this ship. It still has that going on for it. Let's go over to the Galaxy Q&A. If I don't have any modules, is the center of the ship just an empty room, or does the Galaxy come with a stock module? Uh, further, is the void full uh, or empty, and can I put stuff in there? So if you don't have a module, the Galaxy has an empty void area 
with a shell to keep the hull airtight. So it'll allow you to diverse from the hangar to the rest of the ship, but it's simply just an empty space. You could put stuff there, but there's no cargo plates. So it's going to be subject to the normal rules of things flying around. That's not locked down. Uh, the galaxy doesn't come with a stock module for two reasons. One is they wanted players to pick their initial module rather than be stuck with uh, the base plus, you know, whatever they wanted to get. Second, the modules take up physical space in an inventory like components do. So every ship came with a module that players didn't necessarily want. It wouldn't be fair to penalize them. <clears throat> so, yeah. What is involved with changing out the modules? For example, how long will it take? Where can it be done? And can we change modules on the fly? Or do we have to transport all modules to one location first, like other ship components? So, due to their size, modules need to be swapped out at a location capable uh, of that type of work, like a Cousin Crows uh, or some other shops that they will have in the game. And it should take a period of time to do that. So exact timings haven't been determined yet, uh, but with the galaxy's relative ease of access, uh, it shouldn't take very long to change out its modules. Can the galaxy's modules be dropped off planet side to create a temporary base of operations? Simple answer is no. They require ship's power to run them, uh, so they wouldn't be able to uh, be dropped off like that. Will there be any medical equipment in the non-modular section of the ship? No. That's why they have a medical module. The galaxy doesn't seem to be well shielded, having just one large shield. How does the ship compensate for that? Meaning, will it be fast or will it be heavily armored? So, this is something that they are reworking, uh, shields in general. So, it should be very well uh, shielded. So, that's not something you should worry about in this ship all that much. A size 3 large shield will be significantly different than a size 2 medium one or the s smaller items you know that you might find on smaller ships uh, size 3 shield will be significant what is under the bridge it's just a cool looking visual design with no intended gameplay functionality can we get an explanation of what the two rooms on the first floor at the very front of the galaxy are so on the upper deck the two rooms behind the bridge are for crew lift and the docking collar. And on the lower deck, the fore room is for components. And the other one is uh, further rearward for the crew locker uh, suit room for exiting the vehicle via lifts. Are any of the turrets pilot controlled? If not, does the pilot have any other weapons available to use? The pilot only has access to the missiles. The turrets are controlled by crew. How does the refinery module compare to the MISC Expanse's ability to run six separate refining jobs simultaneously? And does the module have any storage for refined ore on its own? <clears throat> the Galaxy refinery module has storage for both raw and refined materials, as well as two reactors, which are way larger than the Expanse's. So it can't run as many jobs at one time but it can process much larger quantities of ore or minerals uh, per job than the Expanse can. Can the galaxy refuel its quantum tank somehow from the refined quantum it has created in the refinery module? Uh, there's no direct connection between the quantum tanks and the refineries, so no. Uh, whereas the Odyssey, which can do that, has the, that connectability. The Galaxy Promotion website states an afterdeck that serves as a dedicated hangar or sizable cargo hold. Does this mean that this entire afterdeck area is a cargo grid of 64 SCU or just the sides of it? Can we only transport either 64 SCU or an extra extra small ship in the afterdeck? Or can we transport both at the same time? The 64 SCU cargo grids are 2 by 32 spaced at the edge of the hangar so they don't interfere with any of the hangar metrics. So you can have both an extra, extra small ship and 64 SCU stored simultaneously. 
Can the cargo module be used as an improvised hangar? And can one use tractor beams to pull the Tumbrel Nova or an Atlas platform vehicle into the cargo module? So if you could fit the vehicle through the door to the hangar or up the lift, then it's possible. But that's not the intended role. Uh, the cargo lift is capable of loading two 32 SCU containers at a time. So vehicles up to and including the Ursa Rover will comfortably fit. What can you tell us about the galaxy's maneuverability or speed capabilities compared to the Carrick and Constellation? They said it's much closer to the Carrick in terms of maneuverability and speed than the Constellation. Does the hangar have refuel repair capabilities? There's no inbuilt uh, systems for refuel and repair, but if the players bring the tools, they'll be able to do so. What size ships can we fit in the galaxy's rear hangar? For example, will the Misk Prospector fit there? Does the rear hangar have a ramp lift for ground vehicles, or can ground vehicles only be used with the module lifts? So the rear hangar is an extra, extra small hangar. With that, that means that only certain ships will fit in there, like the Pisces, the MPUV, the Razor, the 85X, or the M50. Uh, now, as far as other ships fitting in there, it's not really made for those size ships you could probably squeeze a few in there but i would not do that because <laughs> the game's a little finicky and you will probably blow up <laughs> so that is the rsi galaxy q a uh, a lot of good information there i like uh, them putting out the q a's for the ships um was one of those questions that were answered one of yours or did you have some other questions that they didn't get to let me know in the comments down below. Appreciate you tuning in. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy, and I'll see you out in the verse.